Hello, my name is Susan Vance. I belong to an organization called SNAP, Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. If you'd like to know more about our mission in helping those sexually abused, please go to snapnetwork.org. I'm going to uh, be talking to you today about some of the mess that is going on. I don't know how else to describe it in Knoxville. One of the things that <clears throat> we need to focus on is the John Doe versus the Diocese of Knoxville and Bishop Richard Sticka. This was filed on February 22, 2022. On May 2, 2022, uh, the diocese made their first response. And in that response, they want to strike or remove anything that has to do with Cardinal Regali and Cardinal Jeebish. They want to strike many other things as well, but the, this is a, a really critical part of it because of the international aspect of Cardinal Jeebish and Cardinal Regali. So you'll find words in this like impertinent, immaterial, scandalous, irrelevant. That's pretty typical for a motion to strike. Uh, I've seen it in many other things. Um, it's just the ridiculous language of those who want to strike everything from the uh, lawsuit. But they do want to get rid of Jeebish and Regali. Now, on the le uh, left, you'll see Cardinal Stanislaw Jeebish, and on the right, you will see Cardinal Justin Regali. Bishop Richard Sticka is in the middle. This, is, uh, this picture was taken at the uh, dedication of the cathedral in 2019. So, the question is, do we exclude these important men from the lawsuit? Because it would cause the diocese a lot of trouble if they're kept in, basically. Um, are they not important? I think we're going to uh, play a game of um, <sighs> game of cardinals. That's what I'm, I'm going to call it. Game of cardinals where we're going to go through and find all the instances where Cardinal Stanislaw Jeebish and Cardinal Justin Regali make a very important uh, part of what is going on in Knoxville right now and should not, therefore, be stricken from the lawsuit. The game of cardinals is kind of like an ecclesiastical where's Waldo. We'll find them uh, like you would find where's Waldo uh, all over the place, but kind of hard to see unless you focus in on them. First of all, uh, Stanislaw Jeebish is a Polish prelate who was for 39 years the secretary to uh, St. John Paul II. He's a very prominent man with a lot of power, and the church does not want to see Cardinal Jeebish uh, uh, in trouble. And that's what uh, will happen here, I think. Here's Cardinal Jeebish. And when he was young, he was the secretary to St. John Paul II. In um, around 2010, the diocese sponsored a uh, pilgrimage to Poland and other uh, Eastern European countries. Uh, Deacon Sean Smith and, and Bishop Richard Sticka left the group and went uh, on their own to visit Cardinal Jeebish. So he's been known to Sticka for a long, long time. These two people play a part in this lawsuit, and they play a part in why Jeebish and uh, Regali should stay in, especially Jeebish. Um, Wojciech Subchuk is a seminarian who is at the center of the lawsuit. Uh, and Father Martin Gladish, who is now incarnated into the Diocese of Knoxville and is the associate pastor of the cathedral. And this is how they figure in this story. Here's Wojciech's uh, first uh, appearance. In the East Tennessee Catholic in November 2018, Jim Wogan, Communications Director for the Diocese of Knoxville wrote an article in which he is quoted as saying that Wojciech arrived in the diocese at the recommendation of Archbishop Stanislaw Jeebish. So here's a Jeebish sighting, and this is a very important one. This was in November 2018, and this article was uh, recounting a retreat held in the summer of 2018. So the, there are two podcasts in the diocesan arsenal inside the Diocese of Knoxville. 
and these two you won't find them again on the website now but I have copies of them and they will be available to you uh, in the uh, documentation after this video. Both Subchuck and Gladish were recommended to Knoxville by Jeebish. Here's what uh, Wojciech Subchuck said and I'm going to increase this I think so that you can see it as I read it and you can also listen to it. Uh, Cardinal Jeebish, a very close friend of my pastor in Poland and also knew my family and was visiting the Knoxville Diocese when there was the dedication of the new cathedral and then he came to Orchard Lake my previous, my former seminary, he told me like they need a Polish priest, they need a Polish seminarian, and you should go there. So this is um, this is a very important podcast. It's uh, not available now, but uh, I do have a copy, and you can uh, access it below. Father Martin Gladish has a podcast number nine, episode nine in the Diocese of Knoxville, and I know you can't read all this, but uh, I do. I will have a PDF document that you can download and access and, and follow all these links. But Father Gladish in this podcast says that uh, Cardinal Jeebish came to Chicago after the dedication of the cathedral and asked him to go to Knoxville. In fact, he said that many Polish Catholics had asked him to send them a Polish priest. So Cardinal Jeebish is no small part of the Diocese of Knoxville. He has sent a priest and a seminarian to this diocese. And uh, therefore, to remove him from the lawsuit, to remove any reference to him, would really be uh, an injustice, to say the least. Now, Cardinal Justin Regali, this is a, uh, you can see this later in, in PDF format, but Suffice it to say that from early on in his, his young priestly life, he was in Rome in various positions of authority. He was not a small player in Rome. And this is why many of us believe that uh, Bishop Richard Sticca is still in the position that he's in because of the protection of Justin Regali. At one point, Justin Regali was uh, secretary of the uh, College of, of Bishops and others, many other things. If you go to the link below, you will see um, his biography, biography on the website of the Diocese of Knoxville, and it, it is quite extensive. And uh, his, he's been in Knoxville now for 10 years. He came here in 2012. Um, in 2010, Bishop Richard Sticka made note of Char Cardinal Regali in uh, an article in the East Tennessee Catholic where he talks about uh, we're going to get a new home for the bishop. It's going to be uh, worthy of meeting dignitaries, etc. And I guess it is because it was $820,000. And uh, it will be uh, Cardinal Regali will be spending much time there. Well, Cardinal Regali was still Archbishop of um, um, Philadelphia at this time. He was not retired. He did not retire until 2012 when he turned 75. So already in 2010, Bishop Sticka is involving Regali in the diocese. Also, uh, Bishop Sticka took $950,000 in 2010 from the Dan Murphy Foundation. And the Dan Murphy Foundation is uh, supposed to take care of teens in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, how they justified giving uh, Bishop Richard Sticka $950,000 for the residence and upgrades with an elevator and a, a chapel with lots of stained glass windows, how they justified doing that really needs to be investigated, quite frankly. In 2011, uh, Justin Regali was the subject of the second Philadelphia Grand Jury. I'm not going to go into what was said, but he was, if you will download this PDF, you will see in, in summary form just exactly what the Grand Jury said to Justin Regali. And he was rebuked roundly for having at least 30 to 40 priests still in ministry who should have been removed. So 
uh, if you listen to Bishop Sticka, he will say everything was great in Philadelphia under Justin Regali, but that is not true. Um, if you go to the Diocese of Knoxville website, you will see Justin Regali has a uh, his own place, the office of the Cardinal. And he has assumed and been given lots of power in the diocese. So to say that he should be excluded as some kind of retired priest who has no power or who is out of the loop on everything is just absolutely wrong. Uh, Sticka has made it his point to rehabilitate Justin Regali from his position of infamy uh, after he retired from uh, Philadelphia, but the, uh, the power that he has is very significant to this whole case of, of clergy sex abuse, of, of the uh, in, um, defamation. It, everything about the fact that Regali is a powerful man means that he should be uh, kept in this um, lawsuit. Subchuck lived with Regali and Sticka from, uh, in, in their residence from 2019, February 2019, until uh, sometime in February 2021 or so. Um, that is, you know, that is a very significant thing that they, he lived with them. And that means he, uh, Regali is part of this whole situation. Um, the bottom line is that Regali and Jeebish are integral to the John Doe lawsuit. It's obvious in the timeline. Um, if you go now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play for you in a minute the uh, promo for the Christine Niles first part of the documentary. She has a one hour long documentary divided into two parts. If you, It's called Spotlight. If you Google Christine Niles Spotlight, Bishop Sticker, Truth Teller, or Sociopath, or any a combination of those, you will get to that. And um, you should make every attempt to listen to the full hour. You will get everything I've said in spades and then some. The people are very upset. They put him in proximity to students at the elementary school and then at the high school. Did you ever hear the expression, the seat of power? Bishop Sticka has been protected by Justin Regali. This is always about abuse of power. He loves America. He said, God bless America. Something has to happen soon. This documentary came out June 1st and June 2nd in two different uh, segments. Please watch it. Please understand how serious this whole situation is and understand that we need to keep Justin Regali and, and uh, Stanislaw Jeebish in this lawsuit for justice to be done. Thank you very much.